To show that a set of vectors v over a scalar field f is a vector space, we have to prove that all 10 requirements are met. But how much do we have to prove, and what can we just claim? While there's no definitive answer to this question, a general guideline is the following. You can assume the properties from one level down. To understand this, let's try to prove that something is, or maybe is not, a vector space. For example, let V be the set of all linear combinations of the vectors 1, 5, 3, and 2, 5, 4, where the scalars are real numbers. Using the usual definition of scalar multiplication and vector addition, prove, or maybe disprove, that V is a vector space. Now, it's important to note that the elements of V are not vectors with three components. They are linear combinations, something 1, 5, 3, plus something 2, 5, 4. So we need to prove, or maybe disprove, that these linear combinations satisfy the requirements for a vector space. So let's go through those requirements one by one. For closure, we need to show that the sum of two of the linear combinations gives another linear combination. So we could set it up this way. We'll start with two vectors in V, and what we'd like to happen is their sum is also in V. Now, if I were a politician, I could just say this is true because I say it's true, isn't it? Anybody who tells you otherwise, it's fake news. It's a conspiracy. Look at the size of his hands. But as mathematicians, rational people, and people who actually care about the truth, we do want to provide some evidence. So again, a rough guide for how much we need to prove. We can assume the properties from one level down. So remember, u and v are defined as linear combinations of 1, 5, 3, and 2, 5, 4. So u is something 1, 5, 3 plus something 2, 5, 4, and v is something 1, 5, 3 plus something 2, 5, 4. So here's the important distinction. The left-hand side is where we want to be proving things. We want to prove that u plus v is in capital V. The right-hand side is our one level down. It's u and v unpacked. And because it's one level down, then everything we'd like to be able to do with standard vectors and standard scalar multiplication and standard vector addition, we can do without comment. Again, this is a rough guideline, but it's a good guideline to start with. So if I add u and v on the left, I don't know what I'm going to get. But because the right-hand side is one level down, we could use our standard rules for vector addition to get And notice now that u plus v is something times 1, 5, 3 plus something times 2, 5, 4. So u plus v is also a linear combination of 1, 5, 3 and 2, 5, 4. So u plus v is an element of v. Now let's consider scalar multiplication. So again, for c in our scalar field r, we want c times v to be an element of capital V. But we can't just claim it's true, so we'll unpack. C times V, well, V is a linear combination. The right-hand side is one level down, so we can use our standard rules of vector addition and multiplication. And we find that CV is a linear combination of 1, 5, 3, and 2, 5, 4, so it's an element of V. We'll check commutativity. So u and v are linear combinations. Their sum is. And meanwhile, if we do the sum in the reverse order, and we can compare the two and see that u plus v is the same as v plus u. For associativity, we need three vectors. So let's put down u, v, and w. And we'll add u plus v then add w. Again, if we look at the right-hand side, those are just standard vectors, one level down, and so we can do the vector addition on the right. Meanwhile, if we add v plus w first, then add u, again, on the right-hand side, we have standard vector addition, and so we get, and we see that the two sums are the same, and so we have associativity. We need to find a zero vector. So remember, 
Our vectors in V are linear combinations of 1, 5, 3, and 2, 5, 4. So we'd like something that is something 1, 5, 3 plus something 2, 5, 4 that can act as our 0. So remember, the right-hand side is a standard vector expression, so let's try 0 of each. So again, u is some linear combination. 0 is the linear combination with 0 coefficients. u plus 0, I can add the right-hand side to get, which is the same thing as what I started with, and so v has a 0 vector. How about the inverse? So again, u is a linear combination. Negative u, well, let's try negative x1, 1, 1, 5, 3, minus x2, 2, 5, 4. And if we add the right-hand side, we get 0, 1, 5, 3, plus 0, 2, 5, 4, which is the 0 vector. So any vector in v has an additive inverse, negative u, also in v. If we multiply by 1, so again we could unpack u one layer down, and now the right-hand side is a standard scalar multiplication, so we get, which is what we started with. So multiplication by 1 holds. So we can also find associativity of scalar multiplication. Again, it's helpful to think about where we start and where we want to end. Now, we can build this from both ends if we use our definitions. So remember, u was a linear combination of 1, 5, 3, and 2, 5, 4, so we can back up a step and also go forward a step. Again, on the right-hand side, we're working one layer down, so we can expand the right-hand side. Now, in order for our proof to flow from top to bottom, we need to somehow get from this third line to the next line. And we note that if we remove a common factor of a, v, we do actually get that fourth line. And so we can conclude that scalar multiplication is associative. Finally, we have our two distributive properties. So again, what we want is a scalar to distribute over our vector sum. So we know what u plus v is. We've already found that. And we know what u and v are individually. So we can write those in. And again, the right-hand side is one layer down. So we can apply our normal rules for vector arithmetic. We can expand and expand. Now to complete the proof, we need to bridge the gap between these two lines. But if we look carefully, we see that we can do that if we rearrange the terms. Which proves the first distributive property. Finally, we want to show that u distributes over a scalar, so we want to start with a plus b times u and end with au plus bu. And again, we know that u is a linear combination of 1, 5, 3, and 2, 5, 4, so we can substitute that in and work our way towards the middle. And now we have a gap, which again, we can bridge by rearranging the terms which proves the last of our 10 requirements for a vector space.